Justin, can you hear us all right? Yeah, I can hear you, Cameron. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. That's okay. Awesome. Thanks, Cameron. As I was looking, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of people. Yeah. Or I made I sure when I walked in that when I put it on the screen, it wouldn't be seen. My furnace went out this morning. Oh, Already called me. Oh, and my husband's been on a three day trip in an hour. To Florida. To Florida. To Florida. To Florida. To Florida. To Florida. I know. I don't feel sorry for him. He's like, yeah, I hate to do this to you, honey, but I have to go pack for 85 degree weather. Oh, don't mention it. That's not right. Is that right? That's not right. All the times are different. We only have to it's like a hundred years ago. I woke up and I I took my I've been doing this for long enough with That's not right. Like honey? That's the only time I can control the phone. I'm trying to get everyone present today. Uh, uh, the uh, the carpet is in order. I don't know what to do. My dogs are not going to be happy. Yeah. 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 All right, we'll bring the Aviation Committee meeting to order February 1st, 2023, 8 a.m. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate that. Um, item number one, approved minutes of January 4th, 2023. Sorry. All those, any discussion? Any corrections? All those in favor? Aye. Approved. I'm going to interject something here. There's going to be a fire test at 8.30. So when the bells and whistles go off, don't get excited. Yeah. An alarm for 8. Maybe we'll be gone by that. Um, item two, public comment on agenda items or any item under the jurisdiction of this committee. Anybody have anything right now? Number three, airport director's report, A East GA hangar project update. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, yesterday in this room, we had our uh, pre-construction meeting for the project. Uh, we have both of our general contractors uh, present. We had our uh, representatives from Westwood Engineering, which is the engineering design firm on the project. Uh, we had, of course, airport staff and actually several representatives from the Bureau of Aeronautics, which we haven't seen Bureau of Aeronautics staff a lot in person in the last couple of years. Um, so it was nice to see they made the chip up from Madison. Um, and so um, had a good pre-con pre meeting, um, kind of got everything, most everything hashed out as far as uh, when the project's starting, um, you know, uh, all the different particulars that go into uh, getting all that set up. Um, and so with that, um, r, r Wash Materials, who's the civil contractor, um, intends to get started March 1st or soon thereafter. Um, we're waiting on a couple of paperwork items to be completed as far as some of the requirements on the project, but uh, everything's kind of headed towards them being able to start uh, right around the first week of March. Um, we'll start with some of the demolition on the site, uh, primarily with the actual hangar structures that are going to be removed with the project. Um, and then in April, early April, assuming uh, that there's a lot of frost in the ground, we'll start getting into the ground. So um, one thick warm thoughts here once we get towards the end of March. Um, I think we all would like that. So. <laughs> um, yesterday as well, we issued a press release for the 
hangar project. Um, so we were picked up by Box 11 yesterday. Um, we'll probably be in a number of publications, um, airport improvement, Midwest Flyer, a few others. Um, maybe Dodge Guys Northwest are going to hear back from them. Um, so to get the word out that we're um, growing our hangar space for the first time in 20 years, I think that's a big deal. Um, you know, it's a project that's been a big team effort getting it to this point. Um, the support of the county board is, is very much appreciated on getting this thing going as the bulk of the funding on the project. Um, and so we put out the press release yesterday, get some good traction, some good PR on that. Um, and it'll really go a long way to uh, freeing up some of our waiting list um, down the line here. Um, that said, we're going to open up leasing either today or tomorrow with an email blast out to all of our tenants. Um, we kind of prep them for that uh, late December, early January with an email kind of letting them know that that's coming. Um, we're going to open up, open up the leasing to current tenants first. Um, and so it's on a first come, first serve basis. Um, and then after a period of time, once we've uh, ascertained all the current tenants that would like a space in the new hangars, um, we will then move to our waiting list, uh, assuming there's any spaces left. Um, and let's say if all, if all current tenants take the 20 spaces, then we'll backfill the spaces they vacate to the waiting list. Um, so it'll certainly um, free up some, some space and um, get some new folks here at the airport that have been wanting to be here for a long time in a lot of cases. Um, so that said, we'll be sending out um, an email with a draft lease, um, the terms of that lease agreement, um, and uh, everything that kind of goes along with uh, the process of uh, current tenants first looking to get a space in those hangars. Um, so with that, happy to answer any questions that the committee might have about the hangar project. Questions? I just have one question that's more about the future. Um, what are, are we going? Are we looking at um, any more hangars in the near or far future? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so with this project, we actually had another nine unit building designed. Um, it went out to bid as well, but we didn't have the funding to construct a nine unit building at this time. So uh, once the dust settles on this one and we get the, the hangars all occupied and full, uh, we look to potentially have another hangar project in the works. Uh, I don't know when that will be coming as far as a funding request, but uh, sometime as early as maybe 2024 uh, as far as a funding request order to um, get at least that uh, additional nine hangar, nine unit hangar building moving. And that one would be just to the west of um, this current development. Because that, that is the same area, right? Because I remember once the other stuff is removed, you can easily put that many on it, right? This, this spot that we're talking about for the hangars, for the teen hangars are, it had the capability of, is that? That's what you were saying. The other yeah, thing that's what I meant. Old. Yeah, it's like right at the same spot though, right? The additional hangar? Yeah. yeah. So the nine unit hangar I would be. I have to remember Yeah, here. so yeah. You don't have to. Hangar. I mean, just, I, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure if my memory is correct, right? The, the, the two the ten unit spot. buildings uh, will be essentially in the apron area, the okay. open apron area of where um, the old asphalt is now. Um, as far as additional hangars, um, locations on the current site. We're hope, opening up and creating pad sites for um, additional private hangars to be built along the east and west side of the okay. current site. Okay. Then there's one box hanger on the west edge of our current project site that's Lee Beverage, um, so that'll remain. Uh, but just hopping to the west of Lee Beverage um, is designed for another nine unit. At so some point, I think I want to go for another ride. Because yeah, absolutely. I forget like where you're... There's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. <laughs> How many buildings you got? Yeah. It's on our website um, as far as what we're constructing right now. Right. So I just first how many buildings do you have total? When um, we go for the ride, it's kind of like one of those things where you, you get a new car and then two months later you come back to um, for them to tell you what everything works in it mm -hmm. because it's so overwhelming at first. So right. that's kind of like a, a follow up drive through when it's a little nicer out. I'd love to have. Sure. Absolutely. I have a quick question. When do you think the lease date beginning for the new <clears throat> well, certainly not until the, yeah, certainly not until the completed. Um, right now, um, I think the contractors and, and these are rough schedules because right. we're just getting started. Um, would anticipate um, if everything goes to plan, having the hangers up on August first. Mm -hmm. So it may get done before our venture. It may be done a few weeks after our venture, um, but that's what we're shooting okay. for. Um, so you know, potentially August first, potentially September first, depending on the actual construction. And how many people do you have on the waiting list? Over 50, okay. uh, as far as the waiting list is concerned. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
All right, we'll move on to the airport zoning code update, Jim. <clears throat> Thank you again. Uh, we held, uh, as I say, planning and zoning held a meeting on, on January 24th. Um, Supervisor Gabbard and Hins were certainly at that as, as the chair and co-chair of the planning and zoning committee. Um, I don't believe we had any public comment uh, on our zoning code update at that meeting. Um, so that um, being complete now, we're moving on to a February 3rd, which is this Friday, planning and zoning deliberative meeting, um, where I believe that would be voted on by the by the committee as far as approval or reporting on to the county board. Um, and then I would anticipate we'd be going in front of the county board on uh, the February 28th meeting. Uh, I don't know if there's any other steps prior to that. Um, so we'd be going um, at the very end of this month uh, for the full approval on the zoning code update. Um, that's really the update I have for the committee. We've talked about this a number of times. I'm set to get that approved. Do you think you'll have um, a meeting with Cal on Thursday that meeting on the 28th? Or just a little later? Uh, I certainly think she'll be on or any questions. Yeah, that that's what I was thinking. Right. I don't know that there'll be any questions, but she'll be the one. We'll be involved, I'm sure. Um, okay. Stephanie from me and probably do that, at least on Zoom. Yes. Anybody else here? Okay. All right. Deputy Director's Report A, Lease Database Project. Karen? Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. This lease database project uh, is something Kim and I have been working on for the last six months with our IT department in the county. Um, they have a programming group that can program software and make software for us, which is really cool because we're not spending out of our own budget to do that. Um, and so we're updating our, our process for doing leases. None of the lease wording is going to change or anything like that, but the way we track leases and know what's coming up, know what's in the lease is going to be different. Um, right now, Kim uh, handles all the T-Hanger leases, the month-to-month -month leases. She deals with the customers and um, gets them to sign the lease and then processes it. And then I deal with all the land leases and then anything longer than month-to-month. -month. Um, and the way we keep track of that is a work document. And if you hit tab wrong or you hit enter wrong, the whole document gets messed up. And it's we're tracking it the same way they were tracking it in 1927 when they started here. So we're moving into the 21st century. <laughs> hey, computers back then? Um, <laughs> oh, paper. Paper. Yeah, it was a, the original Word document. Yes. <laughs> Do they have the, 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 the dots on the side? You know, no, no. That kind of <laughs> thing. Not that one. Okay. So often, um, when, uh, let's say, Jason has a question, because every lease is different. There's five different airport directors that have their signatures on these leases, because some of them are 40 years old, uh, 30 years old, 20 years old. Um, you know, Jason has a question about what is our, what was the original agreement on how we were going to handle snow removal at this person's hangar? What did the director 20 years ago agree with them on? We'd have to go on the paper files, look it up, go flip through 20 pages. They're all different, very confusing, easy to miss things. And so we're changing that. We have a database that's about to be um, active and we're going to put all our leases in it within the next month or two um, where we can search that and look that up and Every lease will have like the snow removal requirements, how many options they have and what they're on, how many years are left in the lease, and then also get notifications. We can set custom, you know, three months ahead of when this lease expires, it will notify us uh, that it's time to bring it to you and talk to the, the lessee and, and figure out what the, we're gonna do for renewal. So that's just something that's behind the scenes. Uh, our tenants won't notice anything different at this point. Um, we're just gonna be able, hopefully we'll just be more on top of things, uh, being able to track our leases. I will point out the county has 180 leases, the entire county, and 123 of those leases are here at the airport. So um, that's a big part of our job. <laughs> With this, um, we don't have as many contracts, but we do have uh, a few dozen contracts. Um, and then this software will also keep track of our contracts in the same way where it notifies us when we need to be looking at updating the contract. Um, so that's all I have on that, unless you have any questions. <laughs> well, um, sounds like a good plan. It's something I've wanted to do since uh, I started here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions? <clears throat> okay, we'll move on to item B, NIFA Safe Con event. All right, so um, some of you that have been on the committee for a little while remember this uh, event, uh, NIFA uh, Safe Con, was going to be here in 2020. 
and that of course was canceled. Um, so they're back now for this May. Uh, NIFA is the National Intercollegiate Flying Association, and SAFECON is the Safety and Flight Evaluation Conference. It's essentially a big competition where aviation colleges from all over the country will come in and compete with their flight teams, uh, flying events and ground events. Um, and so they have these regional competitions throughout the year, and then this is the national competition, usually held at uh, Ohio State University. Notice I didn't say the, because um, oh, way went to Ohio State. Say that. <laughs> um, that was so normally, normally at, OS, at OSU's airport, the university owns their own airport. It's set up pretty well for this event, um, but occasionally they go to different airports for the competition, so they're coming here. And so we had our first planning meeting with the organizers of the event. Um, we've met with EA before. Chip was at this meeting on January 13th. Um, and so we got our kind of our first little taste of what's to come with this event. We're going to have more planning meetings, but I just wanted to brief you on what we know so far and then the tenants as well so they know what's happening uh, with this event. Um, the actual competition is uh, only five days, six days, uh, May 8th through 13th, but we're going to have activity related to this event for about three weeks total. So second week in April, third week in April, um, certain flight teams uh, will be coming here to practice. And so they might come that early. The teams that have more money essentially is what I got. We'll be here early to practice for this event. Uh, and then as we get closer to that May 8th date, uh, more teams will be arriving. Um, the total number of planes, uh, 27 teams, at least last year had 27 teams and about 100 airplanes. So each school brings about four airplanes here. Those 100 airplanes are going to be based here once they get here uh, and then practicing every day. Um, we're going to basically uh, go from a normal 200 operations a day to up to 1,000 and a peak of 1,400 operations, so 1,400 takeoffs and landings a day. That puts us um, at about the third busiest GA airport, and we don't have the benefit like AirVenture of having 80 FAA controllers come in and help that. So um, the tower is working really closely with us to manage this. We have some uh, procedures that we're going to implement to, uh, one, keep it safe for the amount of operations, and two, still keep even open and congestion low for our tenants um, that are still going to want to operate in May when it's really nice here. So um, we're going to be limiting the competitions used to runway 1836. And so if the winds don't support 1836 and they shut it down and that's something they're okay with and that's what they do at other airports they go to, which leaves runway 27927 open um, for our tenants. So if there's no lines. If our tenants do need to use 1836, they'll still be able to, they just might have to wait until there's a break in the traffic, just like any other busy airport. Um, the ground traffic and where they're parking is all going to take place on EA's leasehold over on Boeing Plaza in the west ramp. That's where all the airplanes will be parked. Um, they're also going to have um, some airliners coming in without people on them, uh, basically to try to coach these uh, college students once they graduate to come to their airlines, so they're going to be promoting um, jobs. So it's going to be busy over there. EAA is hosting uh, indoor competitions. So not only are they flying, uh, there's competitions on the ground. They're going to be doing that in EAA's hangar. So EAA is playing a big part in hosting us. Um, we're hosting them on our runways, and EAA is using their leasehold to have them uh, stay with them the whole time. So of course, this will also support our local hotels, restaurants. It's a great thing for the community to have them all out here. Basler is going to have a dedicated fuel truck, so these airplanes don't have to taxi back and forth, creating a lot of congestion coming up to this facility to fuel. So they'll have their own fuel truck that's parked over by um, EAA grounds to fuel them up. Um, like I said, we just had our first planning meeting, so that's basically all the details we have. Um, and then we're going to have the next meeting in March, when we'll have a lot more. So we'll, we'll, we will keep you guys updated uh, each month on this event um, and where we're at with it. Uh, to, Kind of summarize uh, our primary goal is to create a safe environment for this event uh, and then also take steps to keep our local tenants happy and the normal traffic happy uh, as best we can any questions how many people did you say how many um take off and landings and what date was that april so the the peak the peak day at ohio state university last year was 1400 operations that was just one day um, and that's the peak days are going to be the practice right before the event. So I would say May 4th through May 8th is what they were telling us are the busiest days. May 4th. 
Yeah, so May 4th is kind of when everything's going to start really ramping up. But it's going to be a few weeks, like the middle of April. Yeah, they Hopefully said. Hopefully we don't get a blizzard like we did that one year. Yeah, so. and, and they're going to actually be scheduling. We're going to know when they're coming. Each school is going to submit the days okay. they're going to be coming so the tower can be prepared for the onrush of airplanes Here's coming around. Um, yes, that's the plan anyway. Um, but she was, actually, she was actually smiling today. I can't believe he's <laughs> smiling. <laughs> smiling because of the shit. <laughs> the, the, when they when he's pre-arriving, you should know the pre-arriving. They told us no more than forty percent would pre-arrive. That's what their number was at the meeting. When they pre-arrive, they will all be parking over here. And then the day that formal practice starts, I think the, the fourth, they'll move over to the restaurant. So you could see forty aircraft sit here for a week or two, right out in front of Madison. And you're going to live out of here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And what what runway are they going to be using? One eight three six is uh, we're going to be doing some markings on that runway for their competition, and so we're limiting them. That's all they can use. I was telling my husband about this, and like, it really has some of their corporate flying because I knew that all the commercial people would probably be there trying to poach on these guys. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was looking for corporate people. <laughs> I had a discussion with them on the phone. You did. Uh, the, for me, the, the the when we say limit twenty three six, that's in the formal practice starting on that Thursday through the competition. Prior to that, there we don't we have no idea. And night was words where we can't control who comes here and when they come here and how many come here. Prior to that, so when they're here, I I don't see any other way. Now they're going to be able to fly on two seven. We're not going to adjust. And you just throw them all over on three six at that point. I don't see how we could say so we can't fly anything on three six or seven. So that when they're here on this ramp over by Basler, it's kind of like a gunslinging operation at that point. As far as I can tell, it's it's going to be interesting. A couple of questions. Fox Valley Tech are they are they interested in this event for their students? We've been interested in it. We were um, we were putting a team together prior to COVID, and the challenge that we see is with the high rate of turnover and short staffing, they have enough coaches to maintain a team. Um, so we're not going to be putting up a team this year, unfortunately. But we would be. But some students could go to yes, this event, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I really would love the details on what that looks like, and our students would love to get involved in that work with those companies and their colleagues. And revenue for the airport? Any any revenue? Besides? You're shaking your head. So. Yeah, fuel sales. Okay. Um, so we you know, fuel coach fees are not every gallon on the airport. So um, fuel sales. Um, they'll be utilizing areas that EAA leases. <laughs> so yeah, that's a separate thing. Yeah. Right. Um, but I mean, really, it's going to be the economic impact to the community. That's yeah. the biggest. Hotels, restaurants. Right. Okay. And tenants will be notified. If this is happening. We're getting together some communications to set up the tenants. We'll probably start that next week. It's in May, so a bit of time. But got Fred, do you have anything at this point for the tenants other than the notification and knowing the dates? You know, it's going to be interesting. We're certainly glad to see the airport use expand with mm -hmm. some national public. I know that uh, I've had a couple of meetings, uh, not in reference to this, but we discussed it with the DNR and truck, hospital truck, and they're considering moving their planes for just two to three weeks, um, just because of congestion. Okay. I was looking at those dates and I was thinking, I got to tell my husband they might want to move their airplanes later he to was the DA because it's just too hard. He was thinking they're going to go to Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this open to the public? And if it if it is, is that taken care of by EAs outside of it? I don't think it is. They didn't mention that, um, but yeah, EAA if it was would be controlling access. But I don't think it's open to the public. That's the case because it seems like a lot of the aviation oriented people in the community would think that they would want to attend something like this because it's a big deal. <laughs> I don't know that we one hundred percent know that question or the answer to that question, but we can find out. I would suspect it's a lot like when we had, I don't know, Mary Beth Bay, you know, when we had it during COVID, when we had IAC here, yeah. which is the International Aerobatics Competition, uh, that wasn't really a spectator event. Mm -hmm. and it didn't open it up and had selling tickets and things like that. Yeah, I was just curious if there was but, another aspect yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the minority report on that. Okay. Thank you. Um, item five, discuss and approve a hangar lease A2 between Winnebago County and Hazard Cameron? All right, so this is the last tenant um, that we're moving from the demolished or the soon to be demolished hangars into a, a new hangar. Uh, our TIFO is moving into A2. Um, A2 is uh, really close to the fire station on the north side of the airport. Um, and this is the standard month to month T hangar lease under the ordinance that was passed last year at 183.37 a month plus tax. We recommend approval of this hangar lease uh, for A2 between Art Tifo and Winnebago County. Second. Motion to name the second. Any discussion on this one? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's five zero. Six, operations and maintenance report. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, pretty slow during January. We received uh, one of uh, our capital outlay uh, items, a uh, new snow pusher for the airport. So uh, that seems to be working better than we expected. Um, another item, um, EAA is going to be having a B-17 traveling from uh, Florida to here. It already left as of Monday. They're expecting it uh, next week, so we're just going to facilitate the arrival of that and movement on the airport. So it's going to be about uh, uh, the wing sections are going to be 24 feet wide by 105 feet long, so it's going to come through the southern gate and then make its way through the airport. So we we're here on the highway, not through the air. I was just going to say, yeah. it's not oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's it's that's a max it's a long 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 It'll be traveling. <laughs> yeah. It'll be traveling on a semi truck. Um, they can only travel during the day. So we're expecting that arrival. So that's kind of interesting. It's been, it's been down for repair in Florida for two years, four years. Yeah. So Three, is it coming here to get finished? Yeah. Yeah. Reassembled. Wow. Reassembled. Oh, cool. Sorry. Yeah, um, maybe I should have started with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, My vision has changed a little bit since you told us. Yeah, the so the, <laughs> so just the wings are flying here. <laughs> <laughs> just, <yeah. laughs> um, and then we've just been doing our normal snow removal. So that's all I got for uh, January. When do you think the B-17 is going to get here? Uh, they said the 8th or the 9th, possibly. Okay. Um, that's for the wings, and then they're uh, hoping the fuselage will show up somewhere in the same time frame. Cool. That's a big deal. Okay. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Any questions from anybody? Okay. EAA report? Chairman's report. Committee member statement suggestions. John already suggested a couple things. So, anybody else have anything? I used to want to state every time that you guys run a good meeting. <laughs> I, <promise you. laughs> I agree. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Speaking, speaking of which, we've got three minutes. Wait, go. Motion adjourned. Set <laughs> meeting date. I've got March 1st. Everybody good with that? Yep. All right. Motion to second. <laughs> Motion to be seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourns. Thank you, everyone. Literally. Uh, <laughs> cool. I know you can do it. Yeah, we have the fire alarm. We've got a lot of time on the database. Yeah, yeah, no, it's going to be great. I mean, we have the same issues in Cheyenne. We use Microsoft Access, but it's all manual entry. Oh, yeah. This is a good thing. I didn't turn off the recording. I didn't either. And we asked that team. You were going to go out for a contract, but they're like, oh, we can do it. Wow. We've gotten a lot of common cooperation.